let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 19 to 21. It's the Gospel for Tuesday of the 25th week of Ordinary Time. St. Luke writes, The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. That's from Luke chapter 8 verse 19 to 21. We are led to think of Christ's brethren. A great deal is suggested in the brief passage of the Gospel I've read, let us remember that in every passage of the Gospel we ought to preserve a constant appreciation of the lofty nature of the person who is at the centre of the Gospels and of the entire Scriptures. He is Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God made man. In the first instance, He is God. God the Son, through whom all things were made, and are sustained, the image of the unseen God, without whom no one can come to the Father. This second person of the Blessed Trinity became man, truly man, just as much as we each of us are, except that in him there was no sin. Now the message coming to him from the midst of the crowds, informing him that your mother and brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you, reminds us of the profundity of the Incarnation. The Son of God truly had and has a human mother and human relatives. He did not have brothers and sisters in the sense of there being other children of his mother, for his mother was ever a virgin. But he had cousins and relatives of other degrees. He grew up with them under the loving eye of his All-Holy Mother, and they had long been on easy and intimate terms with him. With the exception of Mary his mother and Joseph his foster father, how little did they appreciate his true person! For there in their midst, all those years at Nazareth, was the divine Son of the Father, Yahweh God the Son. Yet they would have only perceived that before them was a very good and holy young relative of theirs, we remember the words of John the Baptist, his distinguished cousin, when Jesus presented himself to him for his baptism of repentance from sin. He said that Jesus ought to be baptizing him. John the Baptist knew, perhaps long knew, the great holiness of this of his slightly younger relative. But he was yet to learn from God that Jesus was the Messiah, the Lamb of God. So then, our passage today reminds us of how truly God the Son became man and immersed himself in our human family and social situation. Thus Christ our brother and redeemer, Christ our God and redeemer rather, is our brother. He is bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. But there is a greater and more important family of Jesus to which he refers in our Gospel passage today. Having been informed that his mother and his relatives were outside awaiting him, Jesus observed, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. The ones who were closest to him, the ones who truly shared his life and the intimacy of his friendship, the ones who would inherit from him all his spiritual goods and his grace were those who strove to hear the will of God and put it into practice. Christ described himself in the Gospels as the Bridegroom, a word John the Baptist himself uses to describe our Lord. Not only does this term allude to Christ being the Yahweh of the Old Testament, but it also emphasizes and exalts the Church, which is the object of his undying and sacrificial love. The Church is his bride. We are the Church, his mystical body and bride, 
And in our passage today, our Lord calls those who are his disciples, his mother and his brothers. All these expressions and descriptions show the place we have in the heart of Christ if we truly endeavour to hear his word and put it into practice. The one who did this so superbly was his own mother. Not only is she his mother according to the flesh, but she is his mother in the greater and more primary sense he refers to in our passage today. She is the one par excellence who heard the word of God and acted on it. We remember the pivotal scene of the Incarnation in the Gospel of Luke when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary to ask her consent to God's plan that she be the mother of the Messiah who would save his people from their sins. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, she replied. Let what you have said be done to me. She heard the will of God and, having accepted it, put it into practice. She, mother of the Lord, is our mother and our model in all that is entailed in being part of the family of the Lord Jesus. Let us take to heart our Lord's precious words that ought be our stay and our consolation throughout life. If we persevere in being true disciples of Jesus, hearing the word of God as it comes to us in the scriptures and in the preaching and teaching and life of the church, and then resolutely putting it into practice, we shall be brothers and sisters of Jesus, the Son of God and our Redeemer. 